welcome to my classroom in the previous lecture we have discussed about the scenario indian scenario or in indian context what is the scope for e vehicles and in that lecture we have discussed about india's mission plan in 2020 for national electric mobility mission 2020 we have discussed about that and we have seen the what are the international best practices like in foreign countries how their government or electricity board or energy producers or energy suppliers are giving handling the things to ensure that e vehicles are being accepted by the end consumers also what are the subsidies given by the governments so what are the best practices that have been followed in foreign countries have been discussed and with respect to indian context we have seen that uh, why we have to move from ic based vehicles to the electric vehicles because we have seen that um, out of the top 50 polluted cities at least 35 cities are in india we have to ensure that air pollution level has to be addressed co2 emission has to be addressed and greenhouse gas emission needs to be addressed in this context it is necessary to move from ic engine based vehicles to electric vehicles right so we have seen that what is battery energy density and we have seen gravimetric uh, energy density volumetric energy density how to calculate it and we have seen the batteries means uh, how to increase the energy density what is the work that is being done and we have seen the what is the indian nature or indian market uh, what type of vehicle is being used in the indian market and we have seen that it is mainly driven by two wheeler based market because more number of two wheelers are being sold in this country and we have seen the how to address the cost price of the e vehicles in comparison to ic vehicles and what are the capital and operating cost how to determine for the c vehicles have been discussed in the previous lecture okay in this lecture we are going to discuss about how to reduce the cost of the batteries so battery cost reduction strategies we will discuss so how to do address that we have to increase the energy efficiency of the ev cells we want to reduce the battery size and we want to make use of some split batteries and we can use of a separate vehicle bus business can be introduced and we even battery service dominating these things so we can have some range extended batteries can be introduced and or we can have a conventional approach of choosing the right size battery for a given application can be done okay also we can see we will discuss about the what are the factors that affects the battery life of a battery life that also we will discuss in this lecture okay 3.43500 rupees to 30000 rupees Okay. so that way the capital cost and the operation cost of the ev batteries is going to change okay now how to reduce the cost how we can reduce the battery cost first thing is we want to increase the energy efficiency of the electric vehicle battery size reduced by 35 percentage to 40 percentage over the last 3 years in india so for example e autos were made with some 70 to 80 kilo watt hour per kilometer they have been reduced speed that is the thing the thing is they, their maximum speed is limited so 45 to 50 what our per kilometer is the power consumption for that okay so even for e uh, buses they have reduced from 1600 watt hour per kilometer to 900 watt hour per kilometer so that way there is a drastic decrease uh, it is almost reduced from the uh, reduced by 35 percentage or even say 40 percentage battery size reduction is there okay battery size reduction at least minimum of 35 percentage to 40 percentage has taken place in india and when you reduce the battery size so what happens smaller batteries will reduce the cost when you say the battery size is small the cost is less right cost is less but what happens only thing is the vehicle range is reduced vehicle range is reduced 
so it is never an issue in ic engines because as petrol tank costs are low low, low. okay so that way the vehicle range is affected and further charging this vehicle battery takes a long time charging time charging time for the battery in these electric vehicles okay it takes larger time when you compare with ic thing in 10 minutes you can fill your tank when you go to the get a petrol bunk with the empty tank in your car it takes maybe 10 minutes maximum you want to fill your tank but this petrol uh, this battery e vehicle charging will take lot of time so in public transport somebody traveling from one place to another place how he will be able to wait for longer time to how you will be able to afford the time how we can save the time so here it's like charging time is not you cannot avoid charging time means how what alternative you can do to do the thing say for example in my car i have a battery say for example somebody even some smart boys are there who are committed what they will do is they have a particular mobile and they have a removable battery in their mobile phone right so this 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 battery may cost around 500 rupees let me say what they do they will keep talking in the phone for hours with their boyfriend or girlfriend what they will do uh, once the battery is down if they cannot keep the phone for charging so smart fellow what he does he will have an alternative battery in his hand so he will take the, remove this battery and keep this battery and within one minute he will call back and continue the roasting or whatever call that he is making okay so that idea is a business idea here see yeah, i have to travel 1000 km i have a electric vehicle i can with one fully charged vehicle i can travel 400 km let me say ideally okay then next to charging station is here i have to wait for one or two for example one hour or 15 minutes to one hour it may take depending upon what type of battery you are having 15 minutes or one hour each place i have to wait and i have to travel time so travel time plus wait time makes me from my uh, starting place to destination right how we can save the time in my car so that is where we can make a swapping model is coming into picture okay so what we can do is to make this public vehicles uh, affordable so without the range anxiety we can have swap batteries for example battery 1 battery 2 battery 3 we can have so battery size can be the same so what i can do is split the battery into smaller sizes or one third and swap swapping means that for changing what i told you about in a person doing with mobile phone so you just swap the batteries there is no waiting time to charge the battery and no public charging infrastructure is required you just have to have this uh, small number of batteries available so the small battery sizes makes ev highly affordable compared to the petrol vehicles and no further economic challenge or technical challenges will be there however engineering challenges for battery swapping needs to be overcome in this one because it's like public no so i have a car i have a battery good battery okay and i go to a charging station where i replace it is like at home what they are doing they are not filling your cylinder at the home right what they do they take out your cylinder and give you another cylinder same way in car also we can do we can take out the battery and give you another battery what happens in our cylinder itself we are having a very good cylinder clean cylinder empty cylinder we are having will that fellow takes our good cylinder but we need it to gives us a new cylinder it may be very dirty in thing okay so that is where but when you have, because it is our property when you buy a car we are buying a battery right so in swapping that needs to be overcome because i have a very good battery newly purchased battery but when i charging station they give me another battery which is not, not good state but however it is fully charged i will able to travel but what i am missing my battery i have bought a battery but i am getting another battery and here i will replace that battery with some other battery i go here i give that battery and take another battery and finally i reach my destination when i reach my destination i bought a recently one year one month old battery uh, somebody i may be by chance i may get a even better new battery or there is a chance that to two years old battery i am having which is at this last stage okay so that challenges needs to be overcome and remember 
charging time there are different type of battery slow charging batteries and there is fast charging batteries so we have slow charging batteries and also we have fast charging batteries and remember this battery life is severely affected depending upon it is whether it is slow charging or fast charging okay so battery life depends upon depends upon whether you are doing a slow charging or fast charging okay remember this all these the batteries which are under this category of fast charging batteries they all suffer severely affected by uh, temperature ambient temperature is high and the ambient temperature is around 45 degree celsius this fast charging batteries whatever you are having because you uh, you have you can afford that fast charging batteries you purchased it but around 45 degree celsius you have some problem associated with this okay and the swapped battery chargeable in this conditioned environment in 2 hours to maximize its life and what we can do is we can even possible to pull while charging okay so you can keep in ac room and do the charging right so that is possible so even your mobile phone even when two type of mobile phone we are using says a fast charger is there if you take a charge within 10 10 minutes to 20 minutes you will get 100% recharge, recharge but when you touch your mobile phone it will be too hot right it is better to uh, have it uh, do you do it in your ac room or where you can able to have full temperature hmm? but in hot summer even when you hold your mobile phone in your pocket and walk on the road for 10 minutes your phone will become too hot okay so because our summer in warangal also we have around 45 degrees celsius okay so that type of problem is there but advantages are there associated with this battery swapping so what is there is there is a separate vehicle business without battery and energy business is there coming into picture so we can sell the vehicles without battery because you have a vehicle in that battery cost is more no we have seen that electric vehicles plus battery is greater than your ic vehicles right so when you when you when you don't sell the battery a person just need to buy the electric vehicle in that case your cost is almost equal so this business for electric vehicle is opened up now because the cost is affordable equal cost a person will prefer to buy it and what happened newly you are introducing some entrepreneur who will be doing energy business or we can call them as energy operators obviously a big people will be investing on it what they will do they will open they will with the trademark or uh, their logo they will open their outlets where they will be having a battery it is like uh, rental batteries you want to travel you will go to this battery shop to take a battery you will pay the rent and you will go to the next stopping where you can travel up to 200 kilometers then their own outlet will be there you will give their thing they may be taking a deposit amount from you when you want to travel right so you pay them some 10000 rupees the thing and when you return the battery they will give you back your money and for whatever usage charging price all that you have to pay right so that way you can keep taking a new battery and keep traveling so you there is zero waste, time of wasting there uh, while you want to charge there is no thing but thing is so what happens here is so the uh, capital cost of the vehicle will be similar to that of the ic vehicle or petrol vehicle means petrol vehicle or diesel vehicle whatever it is and if you come to the operation cost it will be equal to your petrol or diesel vehicle so with a limited subsidy this electric autos and buses also can compete with the all the ic vehicles so this is one of the business model which can work okay so that only will help us to commercialize the e vehicles more and acceptability of the by the public right whether it may be two wheeler or four wheeler all that <coughs> and because these volumes of public vehicles would make them really affordable because we will get fleet operator company to buy the vehicles in buy bulk and lease it and we'll give get an energy operator to buy the batteries in bulk and set up energy business 
So right, obviously, these you have Reliance, you have Adani Group, we have uh, Tata Group. All of them will jump into this energy operator uh, business, and they will able to establish their own because they will able to buy them in bulk. So that way, the people can afford uh, rental of this. It's like similar to hundred rupees petrol we are taking for forty kilometer. We can pay that for battery, right? So that is possible. Okay. And another approach is. Private vehicles. So, what is that? Another approach is we know that batteries is dominating the cost of an electric vehicle, right? So, large battery is increasing the cost and also weight of the vehicle, right? So, what happens? Smaller battery creates the range anxiety. That is, use the public fast charger. <coughs> so, waiting time plus public charging infrastructure. So, uh, we can plan for the fast charging. Within 45 to 60 minutes, it's a too long wait, and it will impact the battery life. And if you do very fast charging, 15 to 20 minutes is possible. But it will, as I told you earlier, whenever we need to do fast charging or very fast charging, it will significantly impact the battery life, or it will require some very expensive battery to afford that fast charging. And remember, this type of very fast charging battery will get worse. And the temperature is crossing 40 degrees Celsius. We have, we have seen some video also where the hydrogen formation and release takes place, right? So all that are due to such type of thing, such type of batteries we use. Okay. And another thing we can do is we can uh, introduce some range extended batteries. And this uh, what we'll do is we'll use the electric vehicle with two small battery slots. One would have a fixed low cost limited range battery. Purchased along with the vehicle, okay. So this limited range battery, for example, hundred kilometer range for e car is enough to drive within the cities, or ninety percentage of the days, or fifty kilometer for e, e scooter like that. And we can use them only in night time, slow charging, maximizing the battery life, all of the advantages. And another we will keep on empty slot, where the person. It's like in our mobile phone when you buy, you have a storage capacity. Right in mobile phone, you have inbuilt storage on 28 GB, or you can buy 68 GB like that. Right. So what happens? Then there is a memory card slot. You can even put one TB memory card slot like that. It has come now. Right. Even in desktop, all that. Right. So that way, we are giving two type of battery slot for two batteries. One is fixed battery. It is very small. You can drive within the city like that, small range. But when you we keep a empty space. If somebody wants to travel for long distance, we can use this range extender batteries. So that is another answer for the problem when you want to travel, when you want to reduce the charging time, right? So range range extended batteries, extender batteries can be introduced. Okay. So that second that is called swap model, right? So that can whether we can make use of the swapping that. Okay. So swapping the second battery, doubling the range at a petrol pump, which will take just three minutes. So you remove the battery, keep another battery, which enables another hundred kilometer range for any e car, fifty kilometer for any two wheelers, right? And swap the swappable battery again, still longer ranges. Okay. So that way, we no need uh, infrastructure for public charging. Uh, people, I think, is needed and need not wait for longer time for charging. Okay. And there is another approach, which is the conventional approach. So we have to choose the right size of batteries for a desired range without anxiety. Okay. So slow charge. It will. Uh, we have to choose third approach is to choose right size battery for your application. That is why even for AC selection at home, now the shop person will ask you, sir, what is the size of your room? Right. So, if it is a big room, how many single room or the uh, your room size is small, whether one ton AC is sufficient or one point five ton AC is sufficient, or you want to go for one point five ton AC one or one ton AC two numbers like that, how many AC has to be fixed? What optimum position we have to fix them? All that coming into picture, right? So that way, optimally you can decide a particular vehicle for a particular application. Okay, so then we will choose the right size application. As I told you, the golf car maximum you have a golf ground here. So in that it has to move around, take the players, all that. Maybe it will take a hundred rounds within the ground for one day, 
and how much charge is required. You can calculate, and in the golf car, you can keep a particular set type of battery in it. Okay, so that way, the conventional approach is to choose the right size of battery. Okay, so which will do slow charging. But once it's charged, it will give you required service, and even you can do some fast charging on requirement. But obviously, when you do fast charging, it is going to impact the battery life. Okay, and uh, thing is, when you use the such type of battery, where you will be charging that? Whether you will be charging at home or will you be charging at public places? And whether the charger or batteries need standardization. Or do these uh, swappable batteries need standardization? So all that needs to be answered. Okay, and remember when you talk about when you do fast charging, this battery life is decreasing. Oh, what is what constitutes a battery life? Okay, so battery life depends upon several factor. Okay, the battery life depends upon several factors. Mainly depends upon. So how many? Okay, we know that battery life refers to number of cycles. So that is charging, discharging cycles. Charge one one time when you are able to charge and discharge it. That is called one cycle. Okay. So how many cycles a battery life? Uh, battery life refers to number of cycles it can do. So I bought a uh, mobile. I can do some ten thousand times. I can charge it and discharge it. That is a good battery. Some it is sufficient according to cost. If it gives me five thousand cycles, that is five thousand per day. If I do one cycle, let me say five thousand days, it should come. That battery life should come, right? So that and all very high. I am telling just for a number sake. I am telling. Say for example, five hundred to thousand cycles. So one battery, if it is able to deliver five hundred charge and five hundred discharge, that is five hundred days. It is coming two years. Right, so per day, if you do only one time charging, somebody doing two times full charge is going to decrease. That's why it depends upon what type of chemistry is involved in it, what type of material, anode, cathode, electrolyte combination is there, no? So that battery chemistry, because based on the anode, we know that voltaic cells and we know about the galvanic series, all that. So depending upon these two dissimilar metal are coming in contact in presence of electrolyte, so you are going to have. Uh, you are going to have external circuit EMF being generated. All that. So, if you look at this battery, what kind of chemistry is involved is going to decide the battery life. Because what the, what is the material? Either it is yours is a lithium battery, yours is a sodium battery, or yours is a mercury battery. All that is going to decide. Because accordingly, you are going to have anode reaction, cathode reaction, and this thing. So that uh, what type of material they are using it depends upon the manufacturer. So we have the battery chemistry affecting this thing. And whether uh, rate of charging, rate here refers to the speed at which we are charging. That also affects the this thing. As I told you, slow charging, your life will be more. But if it is a fast charging, rate of charging, it's a quick charger, very fast chargers, your battery life will be reduced. So higher the rate of charging, lower will be the life. Okay. And if you look at the usage temperature, which country you are using it, or what ambience you are living, see, I am just using my mobile phone in a AC room where I kept it at okay, 15 degree or maximum 24 degree Celsius recommended uh, AC temperature. Or cold country I am living, and I am uh, living in some countries where that average temperature is 30 degrees to 45 degree Celsius. In summer it may cross even 50 degree Celsius. Okay, such hot locations. So the location in which you are using. So that way, I can tell you. Okay, instead of saying location, usage temperature. I'll tell you my personal experience. I was living in Dehradun for four four years. So what happened there? I bought a phone, new phone, Moto G. Okay. So what I, in that place, I never faced any heating problem like that. The moment I in May two thousand eighteen, I shifted here. So here, the it is an extreme summer. When I used to hold my mobile phone in my pocket and walk in the campus here in NIT, so I used to feel that mobile mobile phone getting so hot quickly. So I have to go to inside the home and wait for five minutes to use it. Okay, so that way, 
the phone gets very heat uh, hot because of the temperature usage temperature because in the dehradun my average temperature was around 15 to 25 here is the average temperature is moving from 35 to 40 or 45 degrees celsius so that is going to hurt the life of the battery so that is why we are not able to hold the mobile phone in hand all that right so because it is having the battery okay so that is one, another issue so usage temperature is also this is that means it is wherever we are you having more than about 25 degree celsius usage place that is you are not inside ac room here or you are in your country the average temperature is greater than 25 degree celsius so the battery life is going to be low okay and another thing is about operation region of charge discharge that is called depth of we are going to discuss this in detail again so there is called depth of discharge okay so region operation region of charge discharge so what point you are charging and what point you are uh, discharging also going to affect the same another one is calendar life of the battery how many years old battery is new or old that also <coughs> going to affect the battery life okay so calendar life as each battery will have a life time okay so that also will affect the battery life so this battery life will depend upon the rate of charging so battery life is best when we are charging it slowly that means when i say slow charging it is around 4 hours to 6 hours so when i say slow charging it is around 4 to 6 hours at 25 degree celsius we are doing charging at this temperature that is slow charging fast charging is whichever is less than 1 hour less than 1 hour if we are able to charge the battery <coughs> that will be fast charge that is going to impact the life of the battery okay and also if you consider the battery life how many cycles it is doing okay so i told you that battery with 500 to 1000 cycles so the cost what is the cost of them because based on see we know you want to some item to eat also so depending upon how much money we are paying accordingly you are going to have the taste and quality right <coughs> <coughs> you eat at a road side shop you are going to have a price and you are going to have a quality if you go to some quality three star or five star hotel they maintain a hygiene standard all that right so accordingly you are going to pay more so same way here also if a battery charge discharge cycle is around 500 to 1000 cycles it is going to cost low okay so the battery with 1500 to 2000 cycles is going to quite common and it is not available at medium cost okay and battery with 3000 to 4000 cycle means obviously its cost is going to be high right so that way it depends upon batteries with capability of fast charge or discharge cost going to be more okay so a battery slow charging battery cost is going to be less and it is going to be available at low cost and if it is a fast charging battery its cost is going to be higher cost okay so that way a slow charging battery is going to cost less and fast charging battery is going to cost higher and similarly Uh, depending upon the number of cycles also the cost of the battery is going to change okay so how do you decide that how many cycles i need for my vehicle or in my lifetime how many cycles i, may, I have to make use of okay so it depends upon the usage right how many cycles does one need it will depend upon how much distance the vehicle will drive in its lifetime full lifetime i bought a bike i bought a car right so what is its lifetime i am going to use it for 5 years 
I'm per year I'm going to drive around thirty five thousand kilometers. It's a full fledged driving. Okay. Uh, five years I am going to drive thirty five into five whatever is coming that much kilometers I am going to drive. So for that how much battery I have to use? That is how we have to decide this thing. Okay. For example, uh, you let us consider a six hundred kilometer range car battery is there. That means one time you fully charge it, you'll be able to drive for six hundred kilometers. Okay. So that will if it is having eight hundred to thousand cycles. it will give a total lifetime of 5 lakh kilometers so but it should be you have to use the, the slow charging vehicle occasionally if you are doing fast charge it is okay but if you moment you do many times if you keep doing fast charging obviously this number of kilometers is going to be reduced okay and if you have a 100 kilometer range car battery so we are all talking about batteries for car okay so if you are considering a 100 km range car battery we need to have at least 2000 cycles to get a, to get a life of 2 lakh kilometers this is the life time that is the car life in a, in its life how much kilometer it will drive okay and if it is a 50 km range scooty kind of uh, bikes no so that kind of battery we need to have at least 1500 cycles minimum 2500 days per day i am charging you let us say 1500 cycles minimum if you want to have average lifetime of 75000 km okay So a yeah, 600 km range car battery, which can have a fast charge, let us say 45 minutes full charge, about uh, 150 km in 10 minutes. Battery is very expensive. And if you want a 100 km range car battery with similar fast charge, would charge only 25 km in 10 km 10 minutes charging time. Okay. So if uh, 45 percentage, or 45. Minutes it takes for hundred percent charge. So if you charge for ten minutes, because it is like a six hundred kilometer, hundred percent charge, it will run six hundred kilometer. So obviously, when you do only a portion, six ten minutes I charge it. How much I will able to do in ten minutes? I will be able to go up to one fifty kilometers. So that's what will happen. Same way in this kind of hundred kilometer range car battery. when you do fast charging they may if you charge for 10 minutes only 25 km you are able to travel okay so that way uh, based on your uh, car battery capacity all that and you are going to able to decide how fast charging i can do or not okay and to compare what is happening all around in india so we, so far we have discussed about indian condition what is required right that right so what is the impact on the utility and regulatory invention interventions are required so we have seen that one third of the crude imports in india is attributed to the transportation and 80 percentage is on the road transportation and we government of india has made a mission plan national electric mobility mission plan nemmp 2020 which was notified by the department of heavy industries which puts emphasis on ev vehicles as a key mitigation policy for Uh, greenhouse gas emissions, all that, and there is a core benefits of EVs, which will in include curbing the air pollution, substantive benefits, ambient air quality in the urban centers, all that, right? So even the recently published reports by Niti Aayog also argues in the favor of EV vehicles only. So this Niti Aayog also uh, encouraging to, to make the utilities which can use the EV vehicles as a mobile assets, and even the forum of regulators commissioned by uh, they made a study to assess different cases like international best practices within the ev space what is the role of regulators and distribution licenses what will be the impact of ev vehicles on the distributing networks what are the business models which are in the purview of existing current leg legislators what is the tariff impact all that they have seen 
and if you look at uh, what is the best practice that has been followed internationally so international level the people are doing like in california what is that california what they are doing okay and in vermont okay so the regulators in california and vermont they have approved the capital expenditure towards the ev vehicles evsc refers to electric vehicle supply equipment <coughs> so they have given sanctions for evse installations as part of the rate base and electricity distribution companies have offered an attractive time of day tariffs to promote off peak charging say for example so these are some of the best practices to promote uh, charging how to manage the business all that okay so best practices is it's like same no so if you look at some of the hotels they will tell that if you come after 9 9 pm to 12 pm you pay only 50 percentage because peak so that now everybody will not come to eat between 7 to 9 because 7 to 9 generally we feel hungry but if you have to come at that time you have to pay 100 and if they say that after 9 if you come you have to pay only 50 percentage so discount is there so what we will plan okay here we'll go at 9 o'clock we'll have our birthday party treat at after 9 so that we'll have 50 percentage reduction right so that is one of the tactics followed in hotels so same thing can be applied here where the electricity distribution companies they tell that if you come for charging at the night time say for example off peak time we know that prime time is there right so let me say 9 to 11 or 3 to 6 so these are some of the peak times where uh, people start their vehicle go to the charging station to fill the petrol no? so why don't we do between 6 to 8 why don't we do at 7 to 8 right so in the morning so that means off peak time if you are able to go there you can avoid the rush right same in the mess also what we are doing right off so what we will do if we have a single mess we are supposed to have only 400 students but uh, these people fix uh, 500 students or 600 students are allotted to the same uh, mess how to manage the people everybody coming at to one to two it is very difficult right so what we can do so time table while making the time table itself we tell that 12 to 1 is the lunch time for first years 12:30 to 1:30 is for first year for second years One to two is for say second year. Final year can eat this time like that. We can shuffle when you distribute the students free time, and if you are able to reach in different timing, so you can avoid the lunch time. Means avoid the miss crowd at the miss. But unfortunately, what all of them do? Nobody goes to twelve to one, twelve thirty to one thirty. Everybody will do a miss is going to close the stool. Chalo, we'll go to miss at one forty five. All of them go here and ask where is my food. Yes, already crowd. We are waiting our time like that. No, so we have to our manage the crowd. We have to manage timings, right? So that is one of the thing in basically in this uh, offering the attractive time of the day tariffs to promote off peak charging. Because even if the Ola cabs and all, if you see, if you want to book cabs, uh, any cab, okay, no, I don't want to take the names. When you peak peak hours, they will say peak hour charges. They charge double. when you want to book during peak hours in the morning time or the evening time so that and all business model okay so you the thing is if you want to save money avoid uh, tra- planning your travel during that time planning ahead of later the peak time no? so same is uh, possible when you come to the one of the best practices is e- wherever energy charging stations are there they can give some tariff attractive offers they can do also the, this they have also played a key role in the development of public charging infrastructure so these electricity distribution companies they played a major role in public that is like common uh, charging infrastructure so this way companies have played a role and if you compare the comp- if you look at the countries like us japan or even china okay they are all experimenting utilization of the ev vehicles at the grid assets that is a demand response resource or ancillary services through vehicle to grid technologies okay so this vehicle to 
with the technologies also they are working on okay and governments have offered some substantial direct and in, indirect incentives to the vehicles so when i say subsidiary government gives subsidiaries okay we have discussed it in detail also in several lectures subsidiary means government say for example if i start a business i need uh, i need some uh, uh, let me say 10 crore i need so government subsidiary means you been in the in that what is that land comes into picture land may be 2 crore land i have to buy i have to pay a tax of 1 crore okay so what government does is government provides you free land government ex- exempts you from Uh, this and uh, even when you want to buy the thing loans are provided at loan is there usually other loans are 10 percentage loan means you will get 5 percentage loan so that way subsidiary government gives in the, the form of directly in the form of place location and electricity they will provide at a subsidiary price okay for others they have to pay 10 rupees per unit uh, for the subsidiary price they will pay only 5 rupees okay So that way government also can uh, help the establish this type of ev vehicles also okay so that way this government have uh, given some direct incentives including the purchase subsidy for e vehicles even even if you are see for example 35000 is the vehicle e vehicle in the market but when you go to buy this vehicle now government gives you some direct uh, subsidy also so you just pay 30000 government pays 5000 so that way you get 5000 help from the government that is one form of direct subsidy right incentive we are getting right and uh, <coughs> and they, they also provide subsidy for installation of chargers while indirect benefit range from tax benefits are there okay uh, to assess the reserved lanes uh, you can see that even for cycling in the main road we make exclusive road for e vehicles so that those who are driving in e vehicle can travel without getting into the congested uh, traffic so exclusive pathways for this e vehicles also one of the thing and uh, you can make parking is free for e vehicles you, otherwise you have to pay 20 rupees for parking if uh, parking is free that is also encourages people to use e vehicle take e vehicle and travel there for example i own a mall where you have to come to a come and watch a movie when you come in your private car uh, high ended car you have to pay 100 rupees as parking charge but you you have ev car also then what you will do you will take your ev car and come right so that way ev vehicles can be encouraged by making tickets also right so even that's what even over in india also we made them the registration charges are different from the ic engine vehicles so that's why even we give a new color to the vehicle green color boards are coming okay so even if you look at our uh, union minister Nitin Kadkari, who has reached the parliament in e-vehicle, and people put this photo, it became viral in the net. Okay, so that way we should encourage people to use e-vehicles. Okay, and if you look at France, and France also offers a CO2 emission-based rebate system. Okay, so that means which subsidizes the electric vehicle purchase while penalizing the higher emission vehicles. So that way. So you have to pay more when you want to buy IC based vehicles. It's like you are paying extra fine, whereas when you buy these e vehicles, you are going to pay less tax. That's what now. That's why that is what I showed you on diagram also. Okay, so where by increasing the tax prior taxes on the uh, IC vehicles, we look the e vehicle is cheaper on price road on road price. Okay. Well, if you consider another country, Norway. According to Norwegian Information Council for Road Traffic or OFV they have mentioned that in September 2021 among the 10 cars that are sold out of the 10 9 cars are at least electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles so that's a very good news for them and less than 5 percentage are gas powered and a slightly smaller percentage use diesel vehicle so that way Norway just hit a record in its move to phase out cars that rely on fossil fuels by encouraging the e vehicles or hybrid vehicles how they have done well let us see actually in fact the norwegian automobile federation they even reported that the past trends continue at the same rate norway could see its last ic based car that is sold in the april next year 
also there is a caution that it may likely to hit zero that soon noting the death of electric offerings in vehicle segments such as pickups and four wheel drive vehicles all that coming into picture actually how it is being encouraged in that country what they are doing is electricity is rewarded and gas is punished it means that norway has long encouraged people to adopt to electric vehicles and does so by using a carrot so large it essentially also a stick electric cars are exempt from the 25% value added tax for instance they are also exempted from the environmental pollution taxes that buyers of gas and diesel vehicles must be paying so the purchase tax for all the new cars is calculated by combination of weight co2 no2 emissions etc okay so the tax is very progressive that makes the big cars with high emissions very expensive and other benefits include a host of auto related fees that are reduced or eliminated from ferry rides for parking also and companies can even get a tax break for each electric vehicle in their fleet and overall norway is seeing a brisk passenger car sales this year more than 35% higher than in 2020 and part of the reason these electric vehicles are leading the market is this growth could come down to concerns about the possible changes in the government policies especially the high vat uh, taxes that is being charged for petrol vehicles so they are getting vat vat exemption also right so the fact that vat may be introduced on the purchase of electric cars above a certain price level may also lead to increased sales okay so with the electric car sales booming the future of the vat exemption has been a topic for political debate in the country as legislators look at how to bolster the revenue while also supporting the move away from the fossil fuels because when you say tax exemption government is losing its income right so that we have to overcome also so that is one of the challenge when you are giving tax exemption anywhere right so that is the thing that is the reason why in norway the electric vehicle sales are so high okay so if you look at the possible different uh, business models we can have a distribution license owned by ev charging infrastructure okay so we have to make ev charging stations so we have to make ev charging infrastructure what they have to do it's like i told no a charging station is there but what they use a diesel generator is used to, to generate electricity and then that is used to, to power your battery are we preferring that no so we want to have a green source of electricity production okay so that way supply of electricity because in a road somewhere in a village there is no electricity also in that village but we want to establish a electricity char battery charging station between two cities in between at because it, it can go up to 300 300 so here i want to have a charging station so what we need to have we should have electricity there so we have to supply of electricity to this electric vehicle is related and tariff has to be determined also right so that is important and franchise so we need to have a licensed franchise to install and operate these charging stations a franchise can also be under the private public model partnership ppp came into picture right that is private public partnership under this triple p model we can encourage many franchises to come up okay so what these franchises will do they will receive electricity as a single point as a bulk supply and the tariff will be like including all the tariff cap everything will be determined by the government authorities and they can also be allowed to buy power through open access without application of cross cross subsidy charger and we can even have some privately owned battery swapping stations and aggregation of demands for batteries and setting up a battery swapping stations by utility distribution license and franchise and we want to have a sale of battery is not sale of electricity we should know and third parties can set up stations to avail special category tariff as determined by the authorities okay so we should also allow to buy the power through open sources kind of thing okay so if you look at the global manufacturing scale and make in india movement all that we are going to have lead acid battery which leads the energy storage market in the production and sales and we have lithium ion batteries which are currently being manufactured in the 
uh, gigawatt scale even for portable transportation and grid storage level and flow batteries are there which are being currently manufactured on a megawatt scale and the production may scale up significantly in the next 5 years and we have thermal storage technologies which are seeing fastest growth due to the applications such as air conditioning and cold storage and if you look at the companies some of the companies in india we know the excite batteries you know amaran batteries are there we have panasonic batteries we have energy power okay so there are several bad battery manufacturers and if you with the invent of this uh, introduction of this make in india so government is having introduced giving subsidies to the people who enter into the alternative energy technologies even you can see the adani power adani or ambani all these people getting into this power sector okay so if you look at the share prices of their thing all the renewable energy sources uh, companies their share values are keep on increasing people also interested to interest invest in that particular alternative energy battery technology companies okay so india is having a potential to become a global hub for advanced energy storage manufacturing in the coming years through the innovation and technology partnership within india as well as with outside world okay so we want to move on from megawatt to gigawatts to even we have some 100 gigawatts all that okay so that is the aim and if you look at the storage cost versus cycle life comparison so we have lead lead acid batteries are there lithium ion batteries are there and we have lithium ion batteries flow batteries are there okay so the cost versus cycle life it is going it is a trade off okay so cost versus cycle life we should have a trade off okay so we should have a leveraged cost of storage which can drop from 15 rupees per kilowatt hour we have a necessary to reduce it to 5 rupees per kilowatt hour in the next 3 years okay hello 3 2 1 go well if you are following the current affairs that's what happening within our country there is a significant improvement in the infrastructure development particularly uh, charging stations are coming into picture for example in maharashtra uh, maharashtra gets some 50 new electric vehicle charging stations you can see the places here so they are allotting stations to be set up in navi mumbai pune nagpur nashik aurangabad kolapur amravati like that okay so uh, because as per the ev policy of maharashtra government uh, they made a ev policy 2021 based on that they are giving some base incentive for e vehicles or suvs and for e scooters two wheelers like that okay so actually rupees 5000 per kilowatt hour is the of the battery capacity uh, they are providing the subsidy and vehicles with a battery capacity of up to 30 kilowatt hour Uh, they are also eligible for a discount which will be totally amounting to around 1 and 1/2 lakhs earlier they used to get 1 lakh uh, uh, limit limit now it was increased to 1 and 1/2 lakh uh, concession okay so that way this early bird incentive is existing here also so the additional incentive of rupees 1 lakh for those making this purchase before this uh, financial year ending that is last month march 31st they were getting that uh, early bird uh, discount also okay so electric vehicles are priced around rupees 15 lakhs such as there are two models we can see in the market tata tiger ev siptron and there are two variants of the tata nexon ev which would be experience a significant price reductions are experienced okay and similarly if you look at the the atom charge which has installed around 250 solar powered ev charging stations in india and the company is having currently installed around 4 kilowatt capacity panels that can charge up to 10 to 12 vehicles of two wheeler or three wheeler or four wheelers per day okay so that atom charge they claiming to be one of a kind ev charging station which utilizes the electricity generating integrated solar roof it is said that the it's it's said to enable the entire ev charging proportions to transition to 100% solar based whereas the conventional ev charging stations generate electricity using thermal power so this company has currently installed around 4 kilowatt of panel capacity panels that can charge up to 10 to 12 vehicles so it will install an additional 6 kilowatt capacity soon allowing them to charge at least 25 to 30 vehicles per day 
actually such a charging stations have been getting in tamil telangana which gets a maximum share of 48 units and followed by tamil nadu which gets around 44 stations ev charging stations okay. actually there is a charging company called electriva actually they initiated one thing which they what they are telling is they will be allowing the people to charge their electric vehicles free of cost this electriva company has set up around 40 public charging station in partnership with the government bodies and these author- authorities are aware that initiative is set to give provide free charging at least at 35 charging stations which are operating at the ring roads at location including south end junction bikaji kama place defense colony lajpat nagar mayur vihar netaji subhash place south campus nelson mandela road green park greater kailash punjabi bag rohini saket shalimar bag preeti vihar like that so in such places this those charging stations which are set up by this electriva will be allowing the delhi people to charge their electric vehicles free of cost from noon to 3 pm so during this time they can charge the vehicle free of cost so that is one of the initiative done by the electriva company okay and there is another company called earthtron ev so this earthtron ev launches around four ev charging stations in the so they are introducing four ev stations in delhi ncr region what is this ncr delhi ncr refers to delhi capital region that is national capital region ncr it is surrounding delhi we have several districts of uh, haryana uttar pradesh and rajasthan all together it is called as delhi Na- national capital region so this is the area in which this ev stations are being installed okay so this earthtron has installed the first four ev charging stations in delhi with the 50 charging point etc having each one having 50 charge points this earthtron ev recently announced that they have launched four new ev charging stations in delhi ncr the ev infra startup they have installed the first four ev charging stations on the highways connecting the delhi ncr such as delhi agra delhi jaipur delhi chandigarh delhi haridwar so the company added that each of the station will have a capacity to charge 50 charging points each okay so there are many ev stations in major cities primarily for cabs and commercial vehicles as a private ev owners usually charge at the home however they shy away from the intercity travel due to lack of proper charging networks on the highways so that that is the aim these kind of startup companies they try to bridge this gap by covering all the major highways in the delhi ncr and for that they have to get approval from the highways right delhi agra highway so they get a concerned authority has to give permissions right so as soon as they are getting the permission they are installing their capacity means that outlets of the charging stations okay so this electric vehicle sales is even rocketing new heights in india in this year new 2021 so we can see that the figures have at least managed to get into triple numbers at least around 14800 Uh, is the number of units that have been sold in 2021 and with respect to february 2022 so our country saw an electric passenger vehicle sales growth around 296 percentage to 2352 units so this data is according to federation of automobile dealers association fada report okay so that way there is a slow pick up in this uh, electric vehicle acceptance by the consumers or uh, or the passengers uh, so that we are going to achieve our goal of having more number of electric vehicles on road soon india is poised to adopt advanced energy storage technologies that can act as enablers for the 21st century grid india presents a huge market with 70 gigawatts plus by 2022 this year and has the potential to become a global hub for advanced energy storage manufacturing in the coming decade through our innovation and technology partnerships and current annual market for lead acid batteries is around dollar 3.5 billion and indian telecom companies have deployed around dollar 500 millions worth of lithium ion batteries in the past two years apart from being one of the fastest growing markets for thermal storage even our indian government and policy makers we are all keen on increasing the energy storage technology given the challenges faced are working on national energy storage mission 
so we have lot of understanding the opportunities regulations finding partners and state information on the opportunities well in this lecture we have discussed about the battery cost reduction strategies and various business models which can ensure that e vehicles are being widely accepted in the market and in the consumers make use of those e vehicles and successfully we reduce the emissions okay nox emissions or co2 emissions all that okay so we started with seeing how to increase the energy efficiency of the e vehicles how we can reduce the battery size how we can have some split battery system and how we can do a business model called as battery swapping model okay uh, which will save the time required for charging all that okay and we have seen that the uh, different size of batteries can be used and we have discussed about the fast charging slow charging what are the advantages and the limitations associated with fast charging and slow charging has been discussed okay and we have seen about uh, range extension batteries which can be uh, it's like extra sim slot we can have some range extended battery because normal applications we will have a particular range of battery but if you want to travel long we can have an additional empty space can be there where we can have the range extended battery and we can do that other application approach was conventional approach we have discussed about uh, how we can choose a right size of battery for a given particular application all that okay and also we have seen what are the various factors on which the battery life depends upon in the next lecture we will discuss about the fundamental concepts relevant to batteries and flow batteries okay thank you so much for joining my classroom meet you in the next lecture bye bye